This is the captain of the Enterprise. Ship ship. Podcasting. The Final Frontier. These are the ridiculous introductions I am forced to read at gunpoint. Or should I say, phaser point. Welcome to Ship to Ship, yet another in the long line of tedious Star Trek podcasts. The show is hosted by David Lawler and David B. Anderson. The two Davids will take you on a journey through time and space every three or four weeks, boldly podcasting where no podcast has gone before. Seriously? This is what you're making me read? Take it away, boys. Let's let's uh, all right. Let's move into Time Zero, shall we? Okay. Now, where do, where, where are we doing? Are we doing? Uh... Hello, and welcome to Chaka Khan: The Next Generation. She <laughs> feels for you. you. She thinks she loves you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so now we're on to time travel again. Time travel, and this is a uh, Time Zero and Time Zero Part Two to Star Trek: Next Generation, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the end of the fifth season and the beginning of the sixth season. I have a confession to make, David. I know this right. isn't a popular couple of episodes i really enjoy them i really enjoy these episodes I, look, it's I don't, for me I don't it's take them. your brain out and enjoy it kind of stuff you yeah, know? Take, take your head off and put it in the <laughs> take your head off put it in a cave in san francisco uh you know i i have and this my... is okay oh this is this is one of those very very rare times or maybe the only time well, no no maybe the second time that guinan Whoopi goldberg's guinan is integral to the plot yes yeah. and i have i have like it's like there's there's weird things where it's like, OK, f- I think for both of us like this, since we're around the same age, this is our Star Trek. This is the one that we would watch when this, it was new. Like Our generation. Like, yeah. Our generation. Yeah. We would watch it every, I guess, weekend for you to start. Like, you know, every- Star Trek is interesting because it was something that our parents dug our parents generation. My mm-hmm. mother got me into Star Trek. Oh, my mom loved it. Like she's she's always has the story of like, I used to watch this when I was pregnant with your yeah, brother. Yeah, my, my mother, too. She watched it. And what's more, I mean, like she watched it during the third season, too, because the, the, that was the only time she was able to actually watch it for the most part. Because yeah, that was when they put it on the death slot. When no one watched. Yeah, it's Friday at 10 o'clock. So, you know, it was people her age who were watching it. Nobody she, was up at 10 she o'clock. She took me to see Star Trek 2. You know, we, we got really into the whole thing, watching mm-hmm. the movies. And then the show comes out, and it's like um, it, it, it effortlessly managed to combine or bridge the generation gap. That's well, kind of like the big problem now between Enterprise and Discovery was like 10 years. Or was it 10 years when Discovery came out? Or 12 or 13? Uh, let's see. Next Gen was 87. Well, no. Uh, Enterprise ended in tw- 2005. 2005. So when did Discovery begin? 2015? No, or no. Oh, I'm thinking man, of like, like uh, I'm thinking uh, of Star Wars. That was 10 years. Um, 17. Uh, 2007. So 12. So 12 years. years. It was 12 years after, and I think something had happened. There was a there was a real disconnect between the people who were watching Enterprise. It was still part of the whole Gene Roddenberry, Rick Berman. Well, it was. You know, vision. it wasn't just. I felt like Enterprise was basically the extension of Voyager. Really, it was. It was very similar to Voyager. Very. And it was, although I would argue it's probably, even though it didn't last as long, that like it was, you know, we'll, we'll get into it when we get into it. Um, but uh, basically what I'm saying is, is this show, this next gen, next generation, just in general, that was our Star Trek. That was the one. It was the appointment television. It was the, I'm going to yeah. watch this, even though that first season, I kind of like, uh, and then second season, uh, a couple, and, there were a couple of good episodes in the first season. The second season was a, a much more of an improvement. It really hit its peak in the third, fourth and fifth. Season. You have to remember like what I was going through. That was a very sort of Nintendo heavy time for me mm-hmm. at the time. So I was just busy doing that. And then, and then, you know, it comes back and so it's season three, I guess, start to get into it again around best of both worlds. Like probably like most people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and then, yeah, and it was best of both worlds started off this whole cliffhanger thing where you ended and then it, ended the season and then on a part one and then you picked it up in part two. And so then that, and then by then it's like okay, I, for me it was I would record it and then I would watch it. I'd like I'd make I'd record it and I'd have my VHS and being hi fi stereo and everything off the local channel and I'd, I'd, at the time I'd sit down and I'd watch it. I still so this, I still have some old VHS tapes I think of of the original uh, off air off the air. the commercials would be great. Um, no, I, I always I always paused. The oh, okay. So never... See, that's part of the fun now. It's like when you have these recordings. Yeah, I know. Can... I know. I, if I had only thought about that, because it's, I know, it's, uh, you don't know what you're going to want until you want it. I know. Yeah, uh, I mean, but because uh, when I'm watching them, I rewatch. I don't want to look at commercials, and even in 1992, you, you know. <laughs> now you do. Now you do. Uh, now you're looking at all this stuff. A lot of people do still do that. They like to 
to keep the commercials on and it mm -hmm. makes people yeah. feel young for about two seconds. Yeah. You know, but it for this particular episode, I'm trying to remember where I was at the time. So it was, it, it was late 90. It was, uh, the, the season ender in 92 and then the season beginner in 92, 93, which yeah. is 92, 93. That's got like lots of classics on it. It's got like a few episodes later, you got the one with the uh, Scotty and with Scotty, uh, but then you have one of the worst episodes they ever made, which was the one where they all turn into kids. No, oh, I say I like that one because that yeah, that was it, truly chocolate pudding for the brain. That one. But, okay, but we're talking about other episodes. I thought but they jumped I'm, the shark with that one. But I'm, I'm like put these episodes in like in the context of like this is. Oh, you this showed is all okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Finish your thought. I just, they would never. I don't think they would ever sort of reach because this was. Uh, let's see. Yeah, best of both worlds was. 90 was the last one in 90 and then the first one in 90. Yeah. So yeah, that's when I really got into it. So then I believe the next was the next cliffhanger for the 91 and the 91. That was, was that? Uh, that was a redemption part one and part two. And that had to do with Worf getting his honor back or something. Oh, okay. Galron. For some reason I had it stuck in my head that it was the, it was the Romulan one with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, Sela. And that whole thing. No, but no yeah, yeah. Like, they were they were part of it. Part it was a, a um, what it was. It had to do it was with a February sweeps one, I think. It had it? to do with the Klingons, uh, some some bad Klingons, Duras family, and all that, uniting or 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 conspiring with Romulans to take over the Empire. And Denise Crosby did oh, return. I remember to about Sela. the Klingons and that whole thing with like the with Worf and everything. Was that one Klingon guy with the big eyes that would just sort of like look at you with the big eyes? And, eh. Gowron, yeah. He becomes yeah, the like, leader, and he's eventually killed by Worf in Deep Space Nine. Um, oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, but, so basically, so, uh, what I was... comes on in June of. I'm like, I'm flashing back of what was going on in my life. This was a very in sort June of, of great 92 time. or 93. This or... was no, it was 92. Was around, Sorry, 92. This was around the time I finally got my GED. I was only like 20 at the time, <laughs> so I'm like, this is this is all sort of a great time for me. It's summer. Stuff is going on. Things are going great. Of course, they return to crap later, but mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of there's lots of there's lots of hope, you know, Clinton was running at the time. There was lots of, you know, love and hope mm. about like the future before it got fucked up. And so I'm watching this and I'm like, so I, I enjoy it on a more nostalgia level than I do on an actual storytelling level, which is good because there's not, well, I really, I, I do like the, these episodes because they're not number one. I mean, it's not Borgs because they no. overdid the Borgs. And number two, it wasn't Klingons. They overdid the Klingons. Instead, this it's was just weird, a straight up time travel fantasy. It's these weird creatures that kind of exist in a in like in in a different sort of they phase. Suck, of yeah, reality. they basically suck your I life essence remind, out or something. Uh, you know what? I just remind, I just realized uh, from beyond. They're they're the things in the from beyond. Remember when they had that machine with the pineal gland and they could see like this alternate reality with those things swimming around? Like that's kind of what these things are. <laughs> I don't. Well, yeah, they exist in a in a different um, a different realm. And a different realm. It's like we just don't see them. There, you you brought up them. something uh, yeah, last night. You showed me the similarities because we were talking about how Data mm -hmm. has the opportunity to finally die at the end of uh, the first season of Star Trek Picard, right? And yes. then the similarity between that and Bicentennial Man. Yeah. Um, now, and, and Bicentennial Man was a movie starring Robin Williams that I had absolutely no interest in because I was kind of androided out by that point. But then mm -hmm. I remembered because you, 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 you showed me this YouTube video that – Bicentennial Man rips off Next Generation, okay? And then yeah. Star Trek Picard rips off Bicentennial Man. So it's yeah. like a cycle of ripoff. <laughs> and it's so completely a ripoff. It's like a shot-by-shot, shot-for-shot remake of things. Yeah. Uh, Picard, mainly from Bicentennial Man. What happens is the Enterprise is called back to Earth. Yeah. Uh, they're taken down to a, uh, a cavern underneath San Francisco where they find, among other things, a, a pocket watch, a, a, a revolver, and Data's head. Mm -hmm. Severed Data's head. And they're like, what? Of course, because yeah. this is like this is an immediate paradox, and this is something I really enjoy in time travel stories. It's not really a paradox. When you watch the whole episode, maybe I can explain. No, it is. It, it, the reason it's a paradox is because Data constructs the, his past. Or, or the forces of it construct the past from the future and creates the past, and it continues. It's, in it's, that. A time, it's all it is is a time loop. It's like this has to happen so that this can happen. And I think it's hopeful, too, because I think Data's still alive. As long as his severed head is down there in San Francisco, he's still alive. They leave it well, there. he's still alive in the past. He's still alive 
his head is still alive in the past. He's still alive, and time you could probably go start a whole... back in the past. Uh, you know, How about that? <laughs> so you're saying they could they could take next generation and do like uh, the Star Trek movie where they basically create a new timeline? I uh, okay. This is this is head? my main problem with Nemesis. They used instead they they said, oh well, Soong made another android before. Bullshit. Which we never heard of. What they could uh, have right done now. was taken his well, head and made a duplicate data. They had lore, and they still have lore. They had his body. You data shut him down. Right? And I remember, oh. okay, you, you, didn't you say something about that? Didn't you say something about the, the episode 10 of Picard that you were suspecting that maybe it was Lore? Or was it somebody else who said that? Well, Before, uh, he, before he introduced himself. I he's, thought, yeah, I thought maybe he would be Lore. He kind of was. It's like they keep coming up with different songs and different, and different like, androids. But it's like, first of all, they, they still have... They still have B4. They can harvest whatever they want out of him. He's in a fucking cabinet. <laughs> they still have lore somewhere. I think they mentioned he was taken apart or dismantled or something, which is like, juice, you had the nemesis. You didn't have to have B4. It's almost like they had somebody, the guy that wrote it just didn't, had never seen a Star Trek movie and didn't know, well, you have this. You don't have to create this. You have this. this. You don't have to do that. You don't have to create yeah. before. You have his head. It's right there. And you have Lord's body. You could do anything. There were so many, oh, so many possibilities. Anyway, um, for both Nemesis and for, I know you love Menace, Nemesis. I, I don't, you know what? Again, I don't, I don't love it. It's kind of like the way I feel about like uh, Rise of Skywalker. You know, like it, don't love it. I didn't like Many many things about. I didn't, mostly I didn't like the way it was shot. It was really kind of ugly on the eyes to watch. It gave me a headache. Cinematography back then was very, it was very choppy and oversaturated. Uh, speaking, speaking of cinematography, this is another thing I noticed about like Next Generation and just the later episodes. They're they're bright. They're well lit. They're well shot. It's like there's a level of professionalism on sort of the later Star Treks, and and maybe it applied to the older Star Trek too when it was when it was on. But it's this level of like it's a it's a tight, well made. Uh, you know, I, I I know show. I know what you're talking about, and I got names for you. I'll give you names: okay. Eddie Brown, uh, Marvin Rush, Jonathan mm -hmm. West. These these were some of the greatest cinematographers of their time. I knew I knew um, I knew a guy uh, who worked with Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown started on Next Generation and worked on the first two seasons. Some of his photography in season two is exceptional it's incredible the way it was shot. shot like a movie practically you know yeah everything was shot like a it's, it's like it when you think about what was on tv at the time it's like well actually there's a couple of things on on uh there Voyager. was nothing that looked that good except for x-files remember x-files had incredible cinematography yeah. there was some stuff on voyager where you know when when they go back in time and they're i think they're yeah, in it's the same guys i mean they would move on from the project well, when you know? i looked at it i'm like this, this this looks to me it look this looks very upn like it almost looks like they went on the they went on the set of booker you know <laughs> or they went on the set of of like what uh, you mean fox or fox not booker um i'm trying to think of the one uh uh Marker, like uh, whatever Marker. that whatever that show was, it had Greco on it at the time. It was like uh, Greco. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, so what happened with Ed Edward Brand shot the show for two seasons. He retired because he was very mm -hmm. old anyway. Uh, brought in Marvin Rush. Marvin Rush brought a lot of color to the show, so you saw a lot of red and blue. Really great, nice, bold primary colors. They lowered the lights down a little bit so that it wasn't as bright. So mm -hmm. it, it, and then and then he moved on to do Deep Space Nine. So Jonathan West took over. West continued this tradition until probably toward the end of the sixth season and the seventh season. They took a lot of the color out of it for some reason. Uh, but Marvin Rush went on to shoot Deep Space Nine. And then he moved on to Voyager. When Voyager started, Jonathan West took over for him on Deep Space Nine. So it was a nice, a very nice. Uh, and then it continued on to Enterprise. So they continued to work with the same people. Um, and, and they did a war an incredible job. I mean. For a long time, and it was a it, Next Generation was a very expensive show to produce. And I mean, look at look at how the beautiful photography in both of these episodes we're talking about. They yeah. go, data goes back in time. They they find out accidentally that this uh, uh, these this race of aliens is going back in time, killing people, and then using a disease at the time as a cover for it. Cholera, I think it was. Yeah. So Data accidentally winds up going through this time portal, and he winds up in in turn of the century. Um, um, San Francisco, where he meets up with, among other, Mark Twain, played by uh, Samuel Clemens, played by Jerry Harden, um, and uh, and and Guinan, and he thinks that Guinan has come back to the past to find Data, 
and he's trying to talk to her. He's like, Guinan, what's going on? She's like, I, I don't know you. Who the hell are you? And this is like, yeah, why was Guinan there? I, I was a little, uh, she was I there. Was... She's a very, okay, you know, about her race, you know, basically, it's the same race as Malcolm McDowell's race and generations, yeah. you know, they're very long lived. And she was, I guess, a little girl at the time or something. But I think what the backstory was is that she went to Earth and posed as a human just so she could watch these people. You oh, know? okay. She was just sort of hanging out. She's like, like, and that's what she says to Data. She's like, "Did my father send you? Because you have to go back and tell him I'm not done listening to all these people talk." Is basically. this before or after she was in that Nexus thing? Uh, pro- I, you know, I, oh god, I don't even want to think I about think that. I Nexus. Probably, I'm going to guess after. I'm going to guess after because I think like her whole people were trying to go to the Nexus. The Nexus the makes ne- no sense for me. Oh, I no, have wait a minute. No the ne- no, wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. Next, no, wait. Okay, Nexus. Actually, the Nexus was. Way after that, because Nexus, she was on that ship trying to go into the Nexus. Or, yeah, no, and then they, they kind of, they, they rescue them prematurely, and I guess that was around the time of Enterprise B. And yeah, all that. That, so it was like probably like, oh so yeah, it would have been like 200 years later. Or yeah, something. it would be 200, yeah, m- much, much later, 300 even. Yeah. And it's, but the Nexus makes no sense to me whatsoever, so because I don't understand what the fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be this thing that that seems to be this heaven drug, but it's also time dependent. I don't understand. It drives me fucking crazy thinking about the Nexus. <laughs> um, okay, so so Data figures out how to. Uh, I I don't know how he manages it, but he he beats all of these guys at poker. He takes all well, their money. He's a fucking android. He can do things. But but it's just like, and then nobody questions him or anything. They just say, well, I mean, like the the guy, to- the bellhop, <laughs> Jack London, dude. Jack he, London, yeah, Jack London. Yeah. He shows up. You show up in town in your pajamas. You win a bunch of money, and now you got a nice room in a hotel, you know? And he's building a device so he can track these seismic disturbances that are happening as a result of these aliens. And um, meanwhile, uh, uh, what's funny is, okay, we, we, we talked about uh, Bicentennial Man, right? Yeah. And we talked about Data. Data's happy now because he has, there's an end to his story. He'll think... He was thinking for a long time that he would just outlive his friends and make new friends and then outlive them and just keep going on through time. And now that he knows that eventually his life is going to end at some point, he, he, yeah, he feels better it, about it. Is, his life doesn't really end. Even I mean, he can logically think, well, it's just my head and my head can be reattached. It'd be like just taking a nap. I know. Really. I, at some point, my head can for be. For some can reason. Be, but he thinks he thinks that is going to be the end of his life. And that's interesting and unusual, too, because I can't believe an android would have that kind of... You know, the thing about Data is I, I've always enjoyed his character because he always seemed to be the one striving to achieve a level of humanity mm-hmm. more so than any other character. He was not particularly well-adjusted because he had ambition. And a lot of people don't really have... You know, like, the characters that most people that I've talked to over, over the course of my time, I've talked to them about which, which characters did you relate to most? And they would always say the same two characters, Data and Worf. They, they, they related to Worf and they related to Data, and those are two characters that aren't human. It's very interesting to me. I'm trying to think. Who, who did I identify with? Who's on the show? Well, maybe, maybe at first Wesley. Because you know, he's a boy. Because he's like he was our age. He's a boy. Well, he's a little bit older than us, but he is our of our generation. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then I was actually I'd say later Riker for some reason because you know no, you got all you. the chicks. He had the beard. Well, Riker was very much like Kirk. You know, he was kind of like a Kirk. I had type. weight fluctuations. You know, as it, oh, the, yeah. it runs the gamut. Yeah. And also, I mean, like I didn't hate Wesley nearly as much as everyone else. Everyone hated Re- Wesley. Like, you know what I yeah. hated? I hated that goddamn shirt they made him wear in that what, first the, season. What those Cosby Rainbow sweaters? Shirt. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> Cosby sweaters? And then, yeah, the Cosby sweater was the house. The house the roof. I'm going to give you the Coke. And, and you're going to have the new Coke. Got to put, put it in the thing in the Earl Grey hot. Oh. <laughs> um, so uh, Picard and Riker and everybody, they all decide they're going to go rescue Data. So they got to figure out some way to simulate the same thing that happened to him and open yeah. up a portal. They go back. Into... I got to say, like, as that's far where as the cliffhangers and like, you know, the stakes being high, I guess I guess the setup is pretty good. But the payoff is is not, I would say. What the uh, the final that, bit before like, they go, they, they go through they go through like they go through the Stargate or whatever. They go through the, the gateway or something. And then that's how it ends. And then you're like, oh, what's going to happen? Oh, yeah, they're just going to they're going to meet Samuel Clements and, you know, and they're going to find oh, but then, head. But they pick up so beautifully in the in the second part. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, too. Oh, I, I noticed this. 
uh, around the time that they were shooting the um, the 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 uh, the part one was around the time of the L.A. riots. So oh yeah, they were having to deal with that in the middle of all of um. They were actually of Cosby. <laughs> a couple of their shooting dates were coincided with the L.A. riots mm. around that time. They they so they they all go back and they're all dressed up and really to the nines and everything. And Troy is practically bursting out of her her outfit, you know. Always as always, yeah. As always, and her skin got darker because she got married to her husband, who's sadly mm-hmm. no longer with us too. He died a couple of months ago as well. Um, well, you know, maybe eventually she'll end up with Frakes. <laughs> if his wife dies, you know, they're, they're very close. Jeannie Francis. What if Jeannie yeah. Francis dies? Um, yeah, kind of yeah. like um, Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. They're very close too. Yeah. Um, so they they pretend to be a theater troupe, and Picard is their director, and. <laughs> It's it's really funny. They track down data, of course. Picard. Oh, Picard had been told by Guinan. He said, "She said, you better go with them on this um, on this mission because we're not. If you can't rescue me, we're never going to meet or something like that." Like she yeah. knows, she knows all about this. It's very. She strange. already remembers all of what happened. Yeah. This She's is one of the better Whoopi Goldberg performances. I, uh, she doesn't really act much on the show, but here she actually gets an opportunity to. Yeah, act. Oh, yeah. I would say some of her best acting is actually on Star Trek because she actually seems to give a shit. Uh, everything else, she just plays Whoopi. No, most of awful. the time, I, I, she's got this wise, smart ass thing going on when she's yeah, guiding. Yeah, Whoopi. Yeah. But here, she's actually acting, and she's yeah, she's yeah, she's she's fully invested in the thing. Even and she has no idea what's going on. That's why. That's why she's acting because she has no idea what's going on. Well, also character. even in, even in Nemesis, the, the the short amount, and then when she's at the wedding, it's like you know, twenty three is my limit. You know, <laughs> twenty three is my limit. Yeah. Um. So this this is a lot of fun. And then there's also freaking Mark Twain who just messes up everything, and he and he winds up going into the future with the rest of the landing party. After these aliens attack, they wound guy, and then Picard stays behind, sends a message to Data through his head uh, into with the like future. A, a piece of metal, a piece like he puts some sort of thing in his he because he knows. If I just put this in here, this is like Bill and Ted logic of like, we'll right. come back and we'll leave the keys here. <laughs> this is why this is why it's a paradox, because it's a self-fulfilling future. It has to, like everything's going to work out the way it's going to work out because it already worked out. That's the way it's it, kind of like the Borg. I mean, you remember the Borg. OK, yeah. the Borg were introduced to Earth 200 years before they were supposed to have been by going back in time, apparently, in first contact. So mm-hmm. their ship crash, uh, their ship crashes in the Arctic. They're buried under snow, and then discovered by Starfleet researchers in the Antarctic. And then they proceed to assimilate and attack Archer and his Enterprise crew. So oh, yeah, that's right. That's it winds right. up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you think about mm-hmm. it that way. That the Borg were always meant to be there. Of course, it's, you know, again, it's and you could uh, from a scientific standpoint of like there's still debate of like everything that has happened will happen everything because like we experience time in a linear fashion, but time who, who's to say time everything that has the you literally you go religious of like it's already been written in the book of god you know it's a, well it's, yeah if you want to get yeah if you want to get it's already it's like about. whatever has happened has happened whatever is happening now is happening now and whatever will happen is That's, still isn't like, that what data says data says that yeah. in, the, in the episode he says it has occurred it will occur it will occur it's, it's the way it is so we they, just experiencing we don't know what's going to happen but it's already like time, time and space are one thing, and time and space are continually expanding. And I guess like the expansion of space is how we perceive time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's why the paradox is so fascinating to me. I like, I like the idea of a par. I don't know why I like the idea of a paradox. It, for some reason, the paradox makes more sense to me than than the Terminator. <laughs> Terminator <laughs> is a different kind of time travel thing. Well, they keep changing their own rules. That's yeah, another... that, that, that's that. Okay, that's the other thing about the Terminator. I don't know if I mentioned this to you before, but mm. if it, it, there should have been no Terminator, if they did everything right, there should have been no sequels, right? And we've got like five movies. Well, I mean, even in the new one, I mean, you still haven't seen the new one, and I haven't seen it either. But the, and, but the I, dark something or other salvation. The dark fate, yeah. Uh, the the plot now is is um because like I think. Uh, Frey like told you like they do kill they kill John Connor at the beginning which yeah. I think is ex- I think that's actually a ballsy move it's like if we're going to do something new let's really fuck with the audience and I think that's a good idea but uh, the logic is is um, 
Linda Hamilton says, who's actually back in it, she says they sent a whole bunch of Terminators back through time and one of them got him or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, that makes sense. But why didn't you, it's like you retcon the whole thing. It's just, I don't know. It just seems like it's it's a writer. It's a writer crossing his fingers going, God, I hope they buy this. I mean, it's like at the beginning of Terminator two, she says right in the narration says they sent two Terminators back through time. Okay. How did we know this? And how (laughs) does she know this? I, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And why didn't, well, how, how come, uh, you know, how come Michael Bean, how come he didn't know? He's like, yeah, they've sent yeah. a bunch of these and I'm just hearing one, but there's going to be more or something like that. He could have said something. But of course, you know, you don't think these things through when you're when you're just trying to you know, get $6 million and you're just trying that's, to make a movie. That's another part. big problem is Michael Bean's death in the past means he has no, he, he shouldn't exist in the future, right? No, no, I mean, he's born. I mean, he, you know, there's gen- the genetic line ends with him. That's the point. Then he's like, alive. Then so he but doesn't a, really die. Well, he should be alive, right, in the future. No, he look. He he impregnates her. Then he he gets blown up and he dies. But then, like, of course, you know, whatever his parents are like, they're still alive, and they still live through the apocalypse. And then, uh, which I, I have a whole idea about, like the apocalypse and what's going on, and and I think in Voyager, and then they're not in Voyager in uh, Deep Space Nine, and what happens in that episode kind of cheesed me off of like, why did you do this? Because this happens, but we'll get oh, to which that. One? Oh, oh, you're talking about oh, oh, okay, right. We're we can't get into here. that though, unfortunately. <laughs> We're almost done here. Yeah, we. Got, I'm, I'm gonna probably gonna wrap it up here because it's already two o'clock and I'm running out of battery. Oh, okay. So we'll have to we'll have to skip to past tense next week. Okay. We can do past tense. We can do Star Trek Four. Okay, we'll do. Actually, no, we got, we got, um, we got Deep Space Nine, and then we got the Voyager, and then we'll do the movies because then I can watch the movies next okay, week. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That makes that's sense. A good idea. Yeah. Okay, and let's, so. God damn it, let's try not to argue. I mean, look, I love arguing, but it's just, it, it, I, I want, I want to stay friends with you, but ah, fuck, sorry. That's my, <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you, and I don't want to piss you off. I want us to get along. Nothing pisses me off, man. I don't go around unfriending people. Okay. Well, <laughs> I get unfriended. Well, I will say this to America: a whole bunch of people go around unfriending him. So again, I said this before. Maybe you're the problem. <laughs> well, I, we I, don't I, all live in a. Star there's Trek only one future. person I ever unfriended, and that was my mother-in-law. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> but I did that because she pissed me off. Anyway, let's uh, let's wrap up Time Zero. So, <laughs> yes, Star Trek. Um. So Picard has sent the message. Uh, Mark Twain is the logical choice to go back and give Picard a message um, about spatial coordinates or something like that. No, wait, he sends the message, right? Yeah. He puts some sort of, he puts some sort of like a Morse code or something in the, in the, in his brain or something. And he, I think, I guess he knew so data is like, like torpedoes, torpedoes. He's he, he just like repeating yeah. a binary message or something. Yeah. Because uh, he, I think he knew that like they would, because he knew that they found the head and he knew that they took the head. So he knew that they would, when Data blew up, they'd have Data's body but not his head. I'm assuming he kn- he think he knows this, right? And so mm-hmm. they'd be trying to reattach the head, or at least they'd be fucking around with the head, trying to get it to work. And then they would know when they when they actually get the head working, that they would. They're using they- both heads from the past, <laughs> and both heads remain. And yeah. and so it, okay, this is the mind blower of the whole thing is that after this ends, uh, everybody's back where they should be. Mm-hmm. And we 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 pan over and Data's heads there again, which means is this all a cycle and it will just continue to repeat over yes. and over again? We'll, well jump no, forward here's again. Happen. Here's what'll happen. Uh, you know, Samuel Clemens he'll leave the head with the uh, with with the stopwatch. It's I think broken. He'll leave that exactly where they found it. They'll find it. They'll have their adventure. They'll go back to the future. They'll reattach uh, the head that they found. And then, and then uh, the head will blow up again, and it'll no, wind no, up no, there no. again, won't they'll it? Re- no, they'll reattach the head, and then he'll get on with his life, and then he'll get blown up again when he does when he does Nemesis. Like he's got that head. You see what I'm saying? Like that that head. I don't know if I agree with you. I think that the head is going to continue to remain there, and it's just going to repeat over and over again. Well, no, that 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 the, the head the head stays there. See, Data is built. Data is built. You know how many years before Next Generation starts? Okay. I, you know, I, I think his stop. age, his age is like what, like 14, 15, something like that. Basically. When the show starts, I, I guess I would say, you and know, if you I could just remember, let me see, I'm going to, let me do a quick search on memory alpha to see what time 
that because I know what episode it is. It's uh, what is it? Data lore is the one that introduces lore in the first season. It's a mm-hmm. really bad episode too because nobody can seem to understand that data is not data. While you're looking it up, I'll explain the, the continuity of he's built in whatever before the show. He goes to the show a few ep- a few seasons in six six seasons in. He then goes back in time. His head blows up. Um, that the the blown up head stays there. The body goes into the future. Then the the head that is sitting there waiting for him is found in the, in a little bit before that is found in the future. They put it back on, and then he has that head, and then that him with his old head goes into and goes to nemesis and gets blown up again. Then then they take what's left of his brain and they reconstruct him again for Picard. And then he's finally able to die sort of bicentennial man style. Mm-hmm. In the end. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. I just explained it. <laughs> just says that, uh, the crystalline entity was discovered, um, in, at the, uh, at the colony where data was constructed along with lore in 2338. I don't know what the fuck time that means for for next generation though. <laughs> oh, 2368 that's 24th century. So that would be um 2364. Mm-hmm. would be the time. So data would be uh about uh 30 28 He would be 24 26 years old. At the beginning of the show? Yes. Okay, so he's 24. So, and that's again what I'm saying there. It's that's why it's so upsetting and frustrating to see that data dies as an old man when he was younger than everybody else with the exception of wesley you know oh he, did, he was listen, younger he than Worf. he was younger than Riker, well, Troy, actually, everybody. You remember it's funny though you remember from uh from the last episode of next generation i just realized this they show the future where you know picard he's on chateau picard and he's got the brain injury q shows him the possible future yeah. uh of uh, uh data's there yeah, Data's there with there. the white streak in the hair. Like it's yeah. a whole alternate timeline. So either Q was fucking with him, or something got re like reimagined or something. So to kill Data again, it's almost like the person that I believe John Logan actually wrote it. But you know, Paramount okay's it. So I'm saying technically they all like, did die in that future too, though. You yeah. remember in All Good Things, uh, the right. ship from the past and the ship from the future died, but the ship from the, exploded and the ship. I gotta say, uh, the the old Riker in that episode, even though he had more hair, I would say old Riker now probably looks better than old Riker with the old Riker makeup in that episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They decided, hey, fuck it, we're gonna give him this really fake gray, white, bluish hair, and yeah. then we're gonna put these crazy wrinkles on him. But Freaks, Freaks was smart. He stayed out of the sun. Yeah. He, all he did was just gain weight. His, 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 they can never seem to get that right because what happens when we grow older? Our our heads get fatter. That's basically <laughs> how we age. Head. Gosh, oh yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, it's just people's people's heads they get fat, but particularly men. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not too sure about women, but definitely men. Because my wife doesn't seem to have aged the day. That's that'll show you what good of husband I am. But, no, that's how you keep a marriage together with your shitty attitude. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's perfect. Attitude. So anyway, I yes. really, I did really enjoy these. Uh, they were, they were, you know, it was stupid science fiction, of course, but it was really fun. Time travel is uh, one of the more rewarding aspects of science fiction. Some of the best stuff you see is is time travel related or body snatcher related. Body snatcher is always a great scenario. I love I, that too. I think that the reason the reason this is a slight disappointment to me is is like when you think of season cliffhangers, when you think of next generation, you think of best of both worlds. You think of uh, you know fire. Dun 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 dun. dun yeah, dun, you think dun, of dun, that. Dun, so dun, dun, dun. Anything that isn't that. Is going to pale. It's kind of a downhill. It's, it's it's downhill. So it's like I, I just I, again like I just I'm like I don't hate it. I actually liked it. It's entertaining. It's got lots of memories in in my head of like and then of course what that was at its peak. The show yeah, was, at its, it was super popular. at its creative peak was between the third and fifth seasons, and and then it did start to go really downhill starting in the sixth season and then into the seventh because it's just it, it it almost became like you expect okay they're going to do. They're going to do like an interesting, weird data episode. They're going to do a couple of Q episodes. Like I always look forward to the Q episodes. Yeah. They're always going to do a Q episode and that's going to be fun. So it's like you're, you're at this point, it's like, it's so established in what it is. It's like, you expect, okay, they should do this. Okay. They should bring in an old character for maybe they'll bring in Scotty this year. They brought in like, uh, you know, they brought in, uh, they've had just about everybody on that show. 
McCoy. They, the only person they didn't bring in was Shatner because they brought him in later. They brought him for in for generations. Yeah. And- yeah, so it, it would become it would become par for the course that you would have episodes. Okay, this Riker falls in love, uh, Data yeah. falls in love, Worf falls in love, Picard falls yeah. in love, yeah. Troy falls in love. I don't know. Yeah. Crusher falls in love. Crusher mm-hmm. fucks a ghost. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, Troy gets weirdly raped like every every yeah, few yeah. episodes by yeah. some sort of entity. Yeah. But uh, but for me, it was all, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun watching it. And they were starting to start. They were starting to do work on Deep Space Nine at, mm-hmm. at that time too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And Deep Space Nine is where we'll uh, we'll continue this yes. discussion of time travel related stuff. Now, past tense one and two, I really did enjoy these episodes, and they were extremely prescient because we're seeing a lot of what these writers predicted would happen. Yeah, I when I saw this, it's like now it is it is very. The thing it com- it's interesting about Star Trek is it can apply. I wonder what it applied to then, but when you watch it now, it's like it it it's that's the, when science fiction is like it can apply to whatever it is you want to put it with. I think I think those writers were fucking prophets. I think they universal, were absolutely it's universal themes of because it's basically we're humans and we keep making the same shitty mistakes over and over, over again. and over again. Yeah. It's a cycle like time travel. Anyway, mm-hmm. until then, I'm David Lawler. Uh, and I'm David Anderson. And we'll see you at the movies where we're going to pump you up. Why do I keep doing that at the end of the day? <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> get your ass to Mars. Yeah, get your ass to Mars. <laughs> you have been listening to Ship to Ship, a Star Trek podcast, with your hosts, David Lawler and David B. Anderson. To find out more about us, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at www.blissville.net or on Facebook at Misadventures in Blissville. Good night.